Dude, the ambulance people in Pittsburgh literally do this every time, and I swear they're gonna hit someone. What's up, everyone? It's your boy. I'm back with another episode of Car Talks. I haven't done one of these in a while, okay? It's been a couple of weeks. I know I am stupid. I need to upload more. I promise you I will. I just moved into college. I was having a 20 year old crisis basically of not knowing what the hell I wanted to do with my life and uh, there was this this certain video that I watched on YouTube just a day or two ago it was Logan Paul uploading his 40 minute YouTube video on each single uh, original that he created so for some of you that may not know Logan Paul released the NFT project called 99 originals and in it there were 99 uh, basically Polaroids of him taking pictures of shit across the entire world and he uploaded that up onto OpenSea. They sold for millions of dollars, obviously. And I watched the video on YouTube of him creating that project and it really inspired me and motivated me to do this more often because I am so inconsistent with this fucking shit. So, yeah, if I blow up and I'm amazing, I have to thank uh, Logan for, you know, motivating me to do this shit again. So, yeah, I want to create content. I want to keep on doing this. Um, and I just hope I stay motivated. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to let the numbers get to me. Um, I'm not going to try to do this for numbers, even though, you know, getting a lot of views and making money off of it is what I need this to do or else you know I'm not gonna be able to do it but I'll, I'll, I'll definitely try to do this I'm gonna work a job on the side as well so that I can you know at least say that I'm making money hopefully but yeah and an ambulance just cut off a fucking regular pedestrian dude the ambulance people in Pittsburgh literally do this every time and I swear they're gonna hit someone they turn on their sirens anybody who lives in Pittsburgh near uh, the University of Pittsburgh if you know that on the Boulevard of Allies the ambulance always fucking turns on their fucking sirens I'm gonna swear less sorry the ambulance always turns on their siren just to get through the Boulevard of Allies faster it is the most annoying goddamn thing ever it's like there's no one dead in the ambulance ever there's no one dead there's no one there's no one fucking injured ever either it's just them being assholes and turning on their sirens so everybody just moves out of their way it's so stupid i hate it i hate it uh they should be uh you know charged for criminal activity i don't goddamn know i hate it dude it's so stupid the dude still has their siren on and i know for a fact there isn't anyone in that goddamn ambulance because they always do this they always fucking do this. Uh, one thing I talked about in a recent TikTok that I did, I, if some of you may not know, I do a TikTok each day where I basically just try to blow up on TikTok just by the algorithm. I don't provide any value on any of those videos and I'm sorry for anybody who watches those. Uh, for some of them, I do provide value. For others, it's just me talking shit and saying stupid stuff. Um, but in one of them, the recent one, I was asking who's winning the war, either Russia or Ukraine, because I really don't know at this point. I don't know what to believe coming out of our media. I don't know what to believe coming out of European media and Russian held media, because I don't know. But uh, I, I, I listened to this podcast that Lex Friedman had with a CIA, uh, ex-CIA intelligence officer, and he was saying that he looked at the facts and he thinks that Russia is unequivocally winning this war. Um, from what I know and what the Western media is pushing, that's not the case. So I don't know what to believe because the West is saying that Russia is having a lot of problems. That's the whole reason why the war is still going on. If Russia was actually that good at military and military action, they would have take that shit in like a couple of fucking weeks. Obviously that didn't happen, so that's why the Western media thinks that Russia isn't really winning this war. That's, uh, that's very stupid to think that because, I don't know, may, Russia, the thing that Russia wants out of this war is Ukraine to be 
Russia's bitch. They don't want to engulf Ukraine and just call it Russia. They're fine with Ukraine still being called Ukraine, but they just want to be the puppet master. They just want to be the person calling all the shots. They want that to be basically a, a, a Russian so a sovereign state, almost. Whatever the fuck that means. I kind of just made that shit up because it sounded cool. But yeah, they just want to control Ukraine. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to absolutely demolish Ukraine and leave it to, to shit. They just have to win the war however long it takes. Of course, you know, what we're told is that there's 25,000 Russian soldiers that have already died. I don't know the statistics or the, 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 validity, the validity of that statement. Who knows? And it, it's, very, it's very naive for people in the United States and in Western countries to think that the facts that our media are saying is true. Because if you ask any Russian that lives in Russia, they think that they're invading Ukraine because there's Nazis there. They fucking believe that. 100% they believe it. That there are Nazis in Ukraine and that Russia is basically stopping that from happening. And so if the Russia, if the Russian propaganda is that good, can you imagine the the severity of our propaganda and we don't even know it. That's the thing. That's that's what propaganda is. And that's what I think people don't understand is they think that, oh, we live in a free society, we live in a free world. Like, yeah, that's true. The US is a lot freer than a lot of other nations. But you must be dumb to think that our government isn't instilling propaganda into our media. The whole idea of propaganda is to make sure that the people don't know that it is propaganda. That's that's the most effective type of propaganda. Is if your if your subjects don't know that you're manipulating them, that's what we're striving for. That's the best. So I just find it very hard to believe anything that's coming out of you know our media. And now I'm not saying that I'm going to discredit everything. I'm just saying I'm going to take shit with a fucking grain of salt because I have a brain and I know that they're definitely doing and saying shit that isn't true. That's my take on the war right now. As for me personally, I think that Russia is winning the war. I think that they're winning the war. I don't think the, the sanctions that the US is imposing, I don't think the military backing that we're giving to Ukraine, I don't think that that's working as effectively as we want it to work, even though Russia hasn't taken Ukraine yet. I think Russia is winning the war and also, I didn't know this until I watched Lex Friedman's podcast with that CIA intelligence. The the military equipment that we're given to Ukraine is based off of a lend lease agreement. So basically, Ukraine is in debt to us. We're not just giving the these equipment for free. Because for the longest time, I'm not gonna lie, I thought we were giving them equipment for free because we were basically fighting a proxy war with Russia. That's what I thought. I basically saw Ukraine as a pawn in this chess match between us and Russia. And we were just sending military equipment to Ukraine so that we could just beat up on Russia. But in reality, we are doing that, but we all, we're also profiting off of it because now Ukraine is going to be indebted to us for decades. Because we are giving them billions and billions of dollars of military equipment. So. We're coming out of this somewhat on top because if Russia wins, I don't, I, I don't fucking know what to say, dude. I don't know what's going on in this world. I don't really care until it comes and affects us personally, which it has economically, but who knows? I don't, I don't, th I don't think it can, I hope it doesn't get much worse than this, but we just have to wait and see. We have to wait and see what Russia does. And we have to wait and see how we react. So that's all I can say for that goddamn, goddamn topic. The next thing, the more important thing, all right, screw Russia, Ukraine. The more important thing is, it's not really more important. I'm just saying it's more important because it's hilarious. Uh, the new Game of Thrones episodes, uh, House of Dragons, the new Game of Thrones TV show just came out a couple of weeks ago. And the new Lord of the Rings 
TV show came out, which is called Rings of Power. Um, I'm sure most of you have watched it if you haven't, and you have Netflix and you have Amazon Prime Video. Highly recommend watching those TV shows. I think they're pretty good. Let's start off with The House of Dragons. I've been waiting for this show. What time are we at? Oh, 10 minutes. Okay. I have been waiting for this show for a while because the trailer for it looked amazing. And we are now, what, four ep three episodes in. We are three episodes in, so three weeks in. And this TV show is amazing. It's a banger. It's so fucking good. It's so fucking good. Um, I think a reason what why it's so good is because it's based off of a book from uh, the Game of Thrones book writer. I forget what his name is, but he's amazing. And every time Game of Thrones or the House of Dragon, when they base shit off of the book, it's usually good. When you don't base it off the book, like the last couple of seasons of Game of Thrones, that's when you start eating shit. And that's what happens. So, you know, since it's based off the books, I think it's amazing. I think the cinematography is great. The CGI, I like it. I know apparently some people don't like it. I think the CGI is pretty good. It's a lot, lot. It, it's up to par with CGI in 2020, 2022. So I liked it. I like the, the, the stories, the characters, and how each character just keeps on changing. The fact that you only need a certain amount of time to love a character and then hate them the next second. That's what Game of Thrones is about. It's about the Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, I think it's amazing. I think you should go watch it. My take on it, I think Viserys. Is it Viserys, the, the king right now of the Seven Kingdoms? I think he's really stupid. He's really stupid, dude. Uh, he is not playing the Game of Thrones, let me tell you that. He's not playing the Game of Thrones. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's too nice to be the king. He's too nice. He's too much of a father figure. He's he's too good of a dad to be a king, I feel like. And so he he's gonna get killed. He's gonna get molly whopped in the next episode or two. Easy money. If you're if you're putting bets on it, bet money that Viserys, Vasiri, whatever the hell his name is, he's dying in the next two episodes. Easy money. Um the girl, Rhaenerys, right? Rhaenerys, Rhaenerian, I don't know. She's cool. She seems pretty decent. She's cool. She's the main character, but I never, I never want to root for the main character. But I guess the person I'm rooting for is Damon, but Damon's also the main character, so that, fuck me. But Damon, Damon knows how to play the Game of Thrones, let me tell you that. <laughs> Damon knows how to play the Game of Thrones. As of now, he knows how to play the Game of Thrones but we'll see if he makes any missteps. The one thing I don't like um, about this is that they're skipping time too fast. As we know, we've known this before. There's gonna be a 10 year like, like gap. There's gonna be a 10 year like jump in the episodes. I don't know how I feel about that. I fucking, I don't really like it because I, I have already in three episodes grown to love these characters and the actors behind them and I don't want you to just get rid of them. But if the if the production is as good as it is, if the story is as good as it is, as they promise, then a 10 year jump and new actors won't be that big of a deal. But we'll see, we'll see, uh, we'll see how good it is in the future. The n numbers wise, they did pretty fucking good. So they had 10 million viewers on the premiere of the fucking show. So on on Sunday night, 9 p.m., first episode came out, 10 million people were watching it. That's insane. And I think over 25 million people now have watched the season premiere, so the first episode, which is crazy. But I think another crazy thing that no one is talking about, or at least I haven't seen anyone talk about, is that the Lord of the Rings show, Rings of Power, had 25 million people watch their show as well. Crazy. But they don't get the same attention, I feel like, in mainstream media as House of Dragons does. Because the Lord, to me, the Lord of the Rings episodes, they, they released two of them. 
I think they were pretty good. I just like I liked it because I ju I just rewatched Lord of the Rings, like the the movie series. So I kind of hated it, and the reason I hated Lord of the Rings was because the CGI was horrible, dude. The story was pretty good. I liked it. I liked the whole character arcs, all that shit. I did have some problems with it, which I can get into. But the main thing I hated about it that dropped it so much in my rating is the fact that the CGI was so outdated, but rightfully so. I was in 2020 watching a 2000, early 2000 movie with CGI in it. For its time, its CGI was amazing. But now, in 2020, the Lord of the Rings CGI was horrible. And so, fast forward to this new episode, this new show that Amazon Prime is releasing, it looks fucking beautiful, dude. The CGI is amazing. The, the cinematography is great. Um, I liked it. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, but I liked it. I'm not that into the Lord of the Rings universe, as you guys can probably tell, because I just watched Lord of the Rings. So I don't know the, the nuances of everything and all that. So I'm just looking at it as face value, knowing general ideas and general characters. And to me, it was fucking amazing. I loved it. But apparently Elon Musk hates it because all the guy characters are pussies. I don't think all the guy characters in that show are pussies though because the one black dude, the black elf, I forget his name. I forget his name, the black elf that was, uh, he was the one that's in love with the, the human, the human white girl, that guy. He didn't seem like a pussy. He seemed like he was there for business. Cause he, that dude, if you haven't watched the show, was balls to the wall basically in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't agree with Elon on that assessment. I think the only reason that asshole is saying that is because Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos is the one that's behind Amazon Prime video and the show did good. There were 25 million viewers that fucking watched it. And Jeff Bezos, the GOAT, bro. Jeff Bezos is the GOAT. This is what Jeff Bezos did. You guys wanna know what Jeff Bezos did? He created a trillion dollar company, Amazon, e-commerce company, and then he said, sayonara, motherfucker. I'm just going to leave, have someone else control it, and sit on my billions. You cannot knock the guy for doing that. All right? I'm not saying that he doesn't work right now. But he, you know Jeff isn't running Amazon right now. You, you can just tell by his lifestyle. He got yoked, dude. Look at Jeff Bezos versus Elon Musk. Elon is running Tesla. Elon is running SpaceX. That guy has not seen the sun in a thousand years. He is a fucking elf. He is an elf lord. He is, he's like a, he's like Galadria, dude. He is white as, as, he has, he has as white as a fucking pound cake, okay? He is running Tesla for sure, okay? But then look at Jeff Bezos. My guy is yoked, dude. Yes, he's on the steroids, who cares? But he's yoked. He goes to the gym because he has time. He's not running Amazon anymore. He's letting the executives take care of it. He's letting the chief whatever take care of it. And can you knock him? You can't, because he put in all that other time before Amazon was a billion dollar company. He put in all that other time. He risked all that goddamn money that he had to take on. So you can't knock the guy for living lavishly now. You know, he's he, he is one of the goats in business, whether you like it or not. Just how Elon is one of the goats in business and Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg gets a lot of shit, maybe rightfully so, but he is a goat in business and in innovation. You can't, you can't lie. You know, whatever you wanna say, you know, a lot of people say that they changed, they changed Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg changed Facebook to Meta. I think, I think the main reason he changed the name and the business model and the, 
the brand of Facebook and making it meta is because he wants, he's looking in the long run. He's looking at the metaverse as the future and he's banking on it. He's gambling on it. And hopefully it maybe will be the future in his, in his luck. But you can't knock the guy and just say the reason why he changed the name of Facebook is because he wanted to detach the, the brand from all these allegations. Yes, that was a good idea to do, to change the name so that, you know, people don't see your company as assholes anymore. That's one aspect of it. But I think the more general and the bigger aspect of him changing the name is because Facebook was synonymous with social media and a social media platform. As soon as he changed it to Meta, that kind of deviated from it being a social media platform. And now it's known as more of a technology company that's focused on the metaverse, the fucking, what is it? The virtual reality and augmented reality. That's the goddamn reason why he probably did it. And yes, it was a bonus. It was a cherry on the top that they didn't have to be called Facebook anymore so that the layman can can disassociate all the bad allegations that they had against them. But yeah. But again, those are that's a, that's another business goat. You can't deny it. You know, can't can't deny it. Dude, wearing a ring wearing a ring is so powerful. It's like Lord of the Rings. You put this bitch on, it's like it manipulates you. It makes you think you're the you're a god. You just, you just want to point at people more. Like, hey, hey, peasant, go do my, go do my chores. I don't know. Get, get yourself a ring. If you're, if you're not confident in yourself, I, I'm telling you, a ring might be the, might be the cure. A ring. Out of all the things that you probably thought of that could cure your insecurities and your underconfidence, get yourself a ring. You put this shit on, you're, you're ready to go dude you start pointing at people like hey bitch go do my shit let's go make some money okay let's go help out kids in Africa and in India put on a ring Lord of the Rings let's go I sound corny as shit god damn it dude what am I doing what am I doing I'm 20 years old doing this shit but I love it and you're gonna see me do more corny shit because that's what I want to do. And if you don't like it, click off of the video. Close the tab, pussy. Just close it. Go back to jacking off. But that's all I got for you guys today because I have to go drop my mom at the airport now. So I gotta go do that, help the mama out. But I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Card Talks. And peace, baby.